trying to get something done tonight for the last part of the evening. It's been a very slow day recovering from partying last night, really. Uh, <laughs> and yesterday, oh, it was quite a full, busy, big day yesterday. Lots and lots of stuff and uh, some emotional challenges and some high spirits, some not so high spirits. Some news, some great news, some not really not great news at all. But uh, uh, those people will hopefully perhaps know who they are. Sorry, I'm swinging in my studio chair, my studio chair, huh? my production chair. <laughs> it's a swivel chair, obviously. And um, so I just thought I'd post a little video and do a bit of a studio tour, updated the uh, studio change bits around and um, you know tidied up and sorted things and arranged um, how I want it so I'll just take you a quick tour through the some of the equipment this is the uh, Korg Cross which is sort of my main keyboard really 88 note weighted hammer action velocity sensitive with after after touch not the usual stuff really but uh, it's, it's hammer action weight, weighted keys it feels like a piano to play it's um not like a, a you know this one's a, a synthesizer and it's lighter like the casio things and the yamaha toy ones but this is like a much more uh sophisticated system of key bed design it's a very very useful and uh, powerful tool it's got a sequencer on board which means you can program drum beats into it and it'll play them back for you while you're playing and then what I do is with this one is you can assign it uh, to be switched on and off by a foot pedal which is that what I'm doing now. So if I press that, when it's switched on, that is. I mean, I should, perhaps should have had it switched on, shouldn't I? Uh, but um, you can set it so the drums come on when I press that pedal and then play. And then oftentimes in a song, uh, you might it might be obvious to some people, but not obvious to others. The drums aren't always consistently on through a, every song. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, got 16 buttons here that uh, you can assign to four banks of favourites. So uh, these these buttons double up as the sequencer programming buttons. It's a 16-step sequencer, so you can put a bass drum there, a bass drum there, bomb, 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 you know, like a, a bar of sequence drums but also there's four banks a b c and d you can flick through and each one has got yeah bank a has got 16 pre-programmed song um sounds in it let's you know, say a piano or an organ or a harpsichord or a synthesizer or a like a brass section or something like that a particular sound for the keyboard and drum beat and there's four of those so that's what uh whatever 416s is of <laughs> you know, pre um uh, instantly available sounds you know just press of two buttons and um, there's m masses of sounds on here already programmed into the machine but you can change all of them in any way you could possibly conceive really it's just a very very it's a it's an entry level a uh, piece of equipment if I'm honest uh, it cost me it's quite a lot of money but um, it's not by any means it's it's a, it's a quarter of the price of this one put it that way um, that's a Nord stage 2 which uh, is the uh, hammer action 88 note weighted key version it's the top of the range really uh, I was very lucky to acquire it at the price I did and it's a uh, this is the about as good as it gets um, you know um, if you see a program like Jules Holland later or you know these big concerts Glastonbury Coldplay you name it all the bands the top top bands and session musicians 
uh, keyboard players in, uh, use this. I was going to say, if you, you see programs like where there's a grand piano or even you know, a re, you know a, a, like a stage piano was on stage, what you'll often see if you get the right camera angle from behind the keyboard player is a flash of red <laughs> behind, and it's this. Because what they do is, uh, grand pianos and upright pianos are notoriously prone to going out of tune, especially in different t uh, temperatures, heat uh, levels, uh, differences in temperature. Um, if the if the temperature changes quickly, uh, so especially if it's outside or in a hot recording uh, television studio, then the temperature can change; it can fluctuate very wildly uh, over a short period of time it sends the pianos out of tune they cost you know a grand piano starts for a, a pro for starts for about 25 30 grand as well you know and not to mention lugging it about and the actual physical um you know well anyway that, that what they'll do is they'll they, they cut out the keyboard of the piano and leave it as a frame and a model uh, a like a, a model for it and just drop one of these in and that's actually what they do and it's this what you see <laughs> not this one but um one of these yeah it's the top thing that's a um key a uh, midi controller keyboard uh that was second hand as well um uh, but i haven't really got scripts with this yet i haven't tested it or tried it um, to any extent, really, but it's got controls on. Oh, not really little controls on there that play, can play sequences off the computer. You see, um, the software on the computer. So this, I've got sort of all, all sorts of like software synths and drum machines and effects and stuff like that. But you can you can actually uh, there's a transport mechanism here which will operate the computer transport mechanism which appears on the screen on this program that I use production program uh, when you get it set up right that is which I haven't as I say yet it's uh, it's very versatile apparently uh, I have used it to uh, a re a, you know a sort of a limited uh, extent um, but uh, it's that's a very modern like quite quite a modern piece of equipment as well uh, and then this side the final one i've got is a uh it's called a studio logic sledge and it's a synthesizer but it's a uh, uh what's it which way around is it it's a digital analog synthesizer and that's two methods see the old the originally synthesizers when they first came out well actually the late 60s the first one um but uh, throughout the sort of late seventies, started to be developed quite um, much more uh, advanced technology became cheap enough to put into synthesizers. Although when I say cheap enough, they were a, lot, a, le a grand, you know, for one uh, at, at, in the seventies, you know, that it was of any use or, or any, you know, uh, versatility or. Um, uh, purpose in, uh, at all, uh, but anyway, this one is um, digress there. They are digital to analog, so they were all analog in the seventies, and then in nineteen eighty blah 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 two or three, the very first sort of digital synthesizer came out called the Yamaha DX Seven, which a lot of you might know, and sort of retro people still using them, buying them again now. But it was the first sort of digital synthesizer that came on the market in mass production. And um, it used uh, frequency, uh, frequency uh, uh, FM technology, frequency modulation technology uh, via algorithms. Algorithms, it was, they, they, they're called. And it was just notoriously very, very difficult to program. Uh, as all the sort of subsequent digital synths were. I mean, this is a digital synth in that sense, and it's very much different different way. These are all buttons, as you can see in the screen. 
different altogether. So is that one, the very top spec one, the Nord. That's made in Sweden, by the way. Um, but they're very, they're notoriously difficult to control in the same sense that we all learnt how to, do, to control an analogue synthesizer. So the analogue synthesizers, although this is digital sound engine, the analogue part of it relates to the fact that it's got all these knobs that you see. You can easily access and easily turn and tune and modify the sound with. Uh, while you're playing, you know, well, hold one hand and move it, the sound, change the sound with the other hand very, very easily and clearly and obviously. It's just got button uh, knobs, you know. I mean, it's got its set of buttons and its little screen as well. It is digital, but it's, uh, you know, very much more akin to the old analog synths. So, and it's a very nice sounding synthesizer as well in itself. It'll also do piano sounds and organ sounds and the usual stuff that all the synths have, best, the best synths have been doing for, you know, three or four decades now. But uh, it also has like a very, it's got aftertouch, so you could press harder on the, on the uh, key, like that one and that one and, that, and the, all of them. It'll change the sound. You can change it, it'll either modulate... Like go woo 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 like a vibrato, or you, or you can change the pitch, or you can assign it to change uh, any parameter. Well, quite a few different parameters, like the modulation. I think you can uh, change the uh, like the, this these features of an, of the oscillator, which is like the generate that where the sounds generated from, you know, like waveforms. Uh, and, and and you can use it to uh, you can assign the the uh, envelopes to it, which is the you know how sharp the attack is. If it's like da da da, or you could go until it'll have a slow attack, you know, uh, or an unrelease. So you can go ba 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 or ba ba ba. Um, with your fingers left on the keys or taken off, so um, you can assign. I think you can assign that to it as well. Like how oh, far down you press it, and it's very very versatile. And all of them have got something called MIDI now, which is the musical instrument digital interface, which was developed at the time when the Yamaha DX7 came out in uh, about 1980 time. And what that is, it uses DIN sockets, DIN plugs, and you can see that, um, to transfer these digital messages to computer-based devices. Um, and, well, just a general sort of, as it says, it's a, a, a musical instrument digital interface. So it's a digital signal that gets transferred which well, obviously all computers are digital, all computers are digital, and always have been, uh, but it sort of speaks that language now. So this is why all these productions, like Calvin Harris and all these producers and Tayo Cruz, I don't know what I'm saying, but like all the like, rap stars and latest, like solo artists, Moby, that one, probably a very well-known one from quite a while ago. I mean, this is what, you know, he probably had very similar stuff to this, probably not as good. Uh, probably 15, 20 years ago now, I think, isn't it? When he was, like, big. But this is the sort of stuff that he would have been using uh, and based all around a computer. This is my mixing desk. And this is a very good one. It's an Allen & Heath. Uh, also second-hand. It was reconditioned, but I was actually sold a bit of a dud. Um, I, I, I did try and send it back pathetically. I thought, like asked if I could return it or as soon as I'd taken it out of the packaging so I, I thought it was sort of the wrong thing for me um, and I was a bit uh, I couldn't get a few things to work at the time but it's got like uh, 40 channels actually because all of these going up to 20 double up so you can put two sets of leads in the back making each one uh, four you know so uh, or uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
uh, 40 channel somehow. I think either they double up or the blue ones double up. And um, it is very good. It's very, it's very, um, what's the word? It's very transparent. It's very clear. There's no colour to it. Uh, there's, no, there's no light distortion or uh, it's just that some of it don't work out and out don't work some of the channels I mean they said it's been reconditioned um, but I think I paid too much for it and it's not lasted if it did work altogether or, or work, it's not lasted and it now doesn't uh, well I've just moved um, that one yeah doesn't work properly you can only get a left channel on that uh that's the left side of this the speaker the stereo left side of the stereo and um and these uh these are a bit dodgy as well these are microphone inputs with phantom power uh which is like um, a boost in the impedance of each channel so that any signal that does go through the top of the channel is immediately and remotely and silently amplified like uh, an extra 10 dB, I think. And, and one or two of those, or certainly one, is, is, a, is a bit of a... Um, the, the phantom power switch at the back is a little bit, uh, you know... Uh, well, it don't work, <laughs> basically. Mm. That's my microphone in there, Perception AK, AKG Perception 220. Oh, I've just got his hat on today. Just cover it up, protect it from the smoke, you know. Probably blame the smoke, possibly blame the smoke on the mixing desk. They're notoriously susceptible because there's so many electrical connections in there. It's all, you know, it's all visceral. It's all solder and PCI boards. Um, so you, they are very susceptible to smoke damage anyway. So it could be possibly that, but it's, uh, I've done it myself. You know, I've only, I only, I've only had it since Christmas, but... Uh, you know, I've only had it 10 months, but um, so I, I'll be surprised, but I suppose it could be. Apart from that, it's very, very nice, very, very versatile and very, very good. Good bargain, second hand again, as usual. And so, well, that's that. And uh, what else can I show you? The computer uh, I built, I've had that three years now, and uh, it's a, a core... It's a, it's a clone, it's an Athlon, it's an AMD Athlon chip, and uh, it's dual core, that's it, and uh, 3 gig hertz, and I've put a, f a lot of expensive RAM in it, uh, Viper uh, RAM, and it's 16 gig at the moment, and that's as high as the motherboard will take it. Um, and all, all the slots are occupied so there's four fours in it and uh, my word that was expensive <laughs> but uh, there's a 500 gig um, hard drive in it uh, 16 gig of RAM and uh, what's the other specs there's a sound card in it I bought which is actually a uh, professional um, dedicated sound card for MIDI and uh, music production uh, called uh, HSE um, uh, Hammerfall and that was jolly expensive as well and all it is it just fits in the back of the computer you don't see it or do don't do anything apart from just provide a very very high quality hi-fi sound I ought to perhaps just try and let's see if I can uh, uh, hold on, find a, oh, let's try this one, sex tape, I don't know why I call it that, hey, <laughs> well, you know me, ever the, uh, ever the optimist, here we are, here, see if this works, this is one I've re I've just learned how to do vocals and the signal path for vocals, which I'm most impressed myself with, <laughs> so let's see if it sounds anything, oh, oh. And that's the program. Listen. Oh, 
That's the vocal track, and that's the signal. As I've sang it, you see. And uh, that's the program I use to write bass solo. Just dropping out because I've been mixing it. Uh, Mixing it all, remixing it because uh, I've learned these new techniques of how to uh, produce. So I've re I'll rejigged all the ones that I can get access to that I like and a good decent, decent of quality tracks. And uh, I went to town on the bass as well. And I've used a uh, oh, let's see if we can find it. So if we can do some online on video production here, bass, there we are. What I've done is, I've gone and put a, see if I can do it now, strip, noise gate, compression. It's the noise gate. Tell you what I'm gonna do. Cut it out. Zip it back a bit, see if I can get it to... Yeah, that's done it. That's meant to be silent, that bit. Apart from the drums. Okay, so there you have it. That's my basics of my studio. Got my new favourite baby there, Warwick 1998 Warwick Thumb Neck Through Bass. Four string with TC Electronic uh, amp and uh, 4x10 cabinet. So, there you go.